Do you know that the existence of our universe and us is only possible because of four fundamental forces of nature? Literally, these forces are the basic building block of our universe. Right now, you might be watching this video lying on your couch and thinking that nothing is happening. But still, the four fundamental forces are continuously acting on you and make you exist. From playing cricket to launching a rocket into space to sticking a magnet on your refrigerator. All the forces that all of us experience every day can be whittled down to a critical quartet. Gravity, electromagnetic force, the weak force and the strong force. These forces govern everything that happened in our universe. So stay with me until the end of the video and you will get a very profound idea about these forces. So before starting, let's talk about what force really is. Well, in physics, force is defined as the push or pull on an object with mass and this push or pull causes it to change its velocity. That means force is an external agent capable of changing a body's state of rest or motion. It has a magnitude and a direction. At first, let's talk about gravity. Gravity is the attraction between two objects that have mass or energy. Whether this is seen in dropping a rock from a bridge, a planet orbiting a star or the moon causing ocean tides. Gravity is probably the most intuitive and familiar of the fundamental forces, but it has also been one of the most challenging to explain. Isaac Newton was the first to propose the idea of gravity, supposedly inspired by an apple falling from a tree. He described gravity as a literal attraction between two objects. Centuries later, Albert Einstein suggested through his theory of general relativity that gravity is not attraction or a force. Instead, it's a consequence of objects bending space-time. A large object works on space-time a bit like how a large ball placed in the middle of a seat affects the material, deforming it and causing other smaller objects on the seat to fall towards the middle. Though gravity holds planets, stars, solar systems and even galaxies together, it turns out to be the weakest of the fundamental forces, especially at the molecular and atomic scales. Think of it this way, how hard it is to lift a ball off the ground, or to lift your foot or to jump. All of those actions are counteracting the gravity of the entire Earth. And at the molecular and atomic levels, gravity has almost no effect relative to the other fundamental forces. Well, next talk about electromagnetic force. The electromagnetic force, also called the Lorentz force, acts between charged particles, like negatively charged electrons and positively charged protons. Opposite charges attract one another while like charges ripple. The greater the charge, the greater the force. And much like gravity, the force can be felt from an infinite distance. As its name indicates, the electromagnetic force consists of two parts, the electric force and the magnetic force. At first, physicists described these forces as separate from one another, but researchers later realized that the two are components of the same force. The electric component acts between charged particles whether they are moving or stationary, creating a field by which the charges can influence each other. But once set into motion, these charged particles begin to display the second component, the magnetic force. The particles create a magnetic field around them as they move. So when electrons zoom through a wire to charge your computer or phone or turn your TV, for example, the wire becomes magnetic. Now the Lorentz force can be expressed by the following formula. F is equals to QE plus QV cross B. Now the first part of this formula represents the electric force and the second part represents the magnetic force. When particle isn't moving, that means its velocity is zero. So V is zero. That means only the electric force will act on non-moving charged particles. But as particles start to move, its velocity starts to increase and magnetic force starts to play its role. Also for particles moving with very high velocity, the magnetic force is much more stronger than the electric force. Electromagnetic forces are transferred between charged particles through the exchange of massless force carrying bosons called photons which are also the particle components of light. The force carrying photons that swap between charged particles, however, are a different manifestation of photons. They are virtual and undetectable, even though they are technically the same particles as the real and detectable version. The electromagnetic force is responsible for some of the most common experienced phenomena, like friction, elasticity, the normal force, and the force holding solids together in a given shape. It's even responsible for the drag that birds, planes, and even Superman experience while flying. These actions can occur because of charged particles interacting with one another. The normal force that keeps a book on the top of a table, for example, is a consequence of electrons in the table's atom repelling the electrons in the book's atom. Next, let's discuss about the weak force. The weak force, also called the weak nuclear interaction, is responsible for particle decay. 
This is the literal change of one type of subatomic particle into another. So for example, a neutrino that stays close to a neutron can turn the neutron into a proton, while the neutrino becomes an electron. Physicists describe this interaction through the exchange of force carrying particles called bosons. Specific kinds of bosons are responsible for the weak force, electromagnetic force and the strong force. In the weak force, the bosons are charged particles called W and Z bosons. When subatomic particles such as protons, neutrons and electrons come within 10 to the power minus 18 meters or 0.1% of the diameter of a proton of one another and they can exchange these bosons. As a result, the subatomic particles decay into new particles. The weak force is critical for the nuclear fusion reactions that power the sun and produce the energy needed for most life forms here on earth. It's also why archaeologists can use carbon-14 to date ancient bone, wood and other formerly living artifacts. Carbon-14 has 6 protons and 8 neutrons. One of those neutrons decay into proton to make nitrogen-14, which has 7 protons and 7 neutrons. This decay happens at a predictable rate, allowing scientists to determine how old such artifacts are. At last, there is the strong nuclear force. The strong nuclear force, also called the strong nuclear interaction, is the strongest of the four fundamental forces of nature. It is 6000 trillion trillion trillion, that's 39 zeros after 6 factorial, times stronger than the force of gravity. And that's because it binds the fundamental particles of matter together to form large particles. It holds together the quarks that make up protons and neutrons. And part of the strong force also keeps the protons and neutrons of an atom's nucleus together. Much like the weak force, the strong force operates only when subatomic particles are extremely close to one another. They have to be somewhere within 10 to the power minus 15 meters from each other, or roughly within the diameter of a proton. The strong force is odd, though because unlike any of the other fundamental forces, it gets weaker as subatomic particles move closer together. It actually reaches maximum strength when the particles are farthest away from each other. Once within range, massless charged bosons called gluons transmit the strong force between quarks and keep them glued together. A tiny fraction of the strong force called the residual strong force acts between protons and neutrons. Protons in the nucleus repel one another because of their similar charge. But the residual strong force can overcome this repulsion so the particles stay bound in the atom's nucleus. Finally, that's all about the four fundamental forces of nature. I guess that you people have got some basic idea about these forces. So if you have learned something new, please give a like and don't forget to subscribe.